the Pirates of Ipanema. Excerpts. Page 6. Priscilla's tribal black hair spills with panache over her bare, olive-tan shoulders. She is supermodel thin and taller than average, though not awkwardly tall. When she wears high heels, she may have an inch on me. Very fond of large sunglasses, her hazel eyes are somewhere behind them, looking down at the screen of her phone, and perhaps occasionally glancing up to check if I am still here. I am. When most people think of Brazilian women, they think of thick curves, Afro-influenced physiques. Priscilla's family comes from the Amazon region, where a mix of indigenous and Spanish genes have crafted a different, more fragile-looking creature. But the fragility is a facade. Beneath the bony frame and European features lurks a jaguar, complete with the manicured claws. Page 15. The figure pursues me casually, out the door, and in the light I see him for what he is, which is a sight as unique as the front of the house to my eyes. Tall and thin, think lanky and you've nailed it, with scruffy black hairs speckled around his jawline and tremendous crop of black afro on top of an oblong head. He does not seem perturbed at being disturbed as much as confused, hazy, awake too early, but still, surprisingly, gentle. He has quickly determined that I am no threat, maybe too quickly, and maybe that should offend me just a tad, but I'll take it, and stands there on the front stoop, towering over me, with an amused smirk and his funny mop of hair tilted to the side. I nearly expect him to reach forward with one of those long arms and pat me good-naturedly on the head. Page 34 In those seven days, Freddy relived his entire life. He reanalyzed every friendship he'd forged, bridge he'd burned, heart he'd broken, and choice he had made. It was purgatory, but he was still alive in the physical sense. By the time the family lawyer finally organized the finances for bail, buying his clients some freedom and time to smooth over issues with his ex-wife, the man who exited the jailhouse was not the same they hauled in. Playboy Freddy, good time Freddy, easy breezy Freddy was gone, left to huddle in the fetal position on the holding cell floor. Page 53 we all drink and we all get drunk. One of the Spaniards plays a guitar and some of the others sing along. But when the time comes to get to work, Tattoo Julian insists on his hip-hop soundtrack. He opens his cases, revealing a full professional set of protective gloves, needles, ink, trace paper, and the rest, not to mention several of his impressive work-in-progress designs. There will be no tracing for this one, though. While the crowd encircles us there on the bench near the stoop in the front, Freddy and I roll up our shirt sleeves, exposing the flesh of the bicep. The buzz of the electric needle whirs in the night, and our pact is finalized as it has to be, with the skull and crossbones etched deep and permanent. It isn't about making the hostel last forever, or even our alliance. It is about sincerity in the now. There can be no shame in a lifelong reminder of one moment in time when you felt the thrill of setting out on a shared adventure, with an ending not just unknown, but unimportant. Page 120. By now I have seen Freddy kick many a guest out of the house against their want. Almost always it has been dudes, simply getting too drunk and pissing in the wrong place, or getting too drunk and crawling in the wrong occupied bed, or getting too drunk and pissing on the person in the wrong occupied bed. But most of these guests are not kicked out early, simply refuse the option to extend their stay. We have learned to run potential troublemakers in a day at a time system at least through the first few nights, and so there is no need to refund their payment or even get into an argument about that. There is only the matter of Freddy doing what Freddy does best, which is sending them groggily retreating to the street as he hollers ever louder in a mix of English and Portuguese that is mostly indiscernible, yet magically communicates all you need to know. Freddy is angry, and your pirata days are done. Page 152. Just as I'm about to head toward him, I get a tap on my shoulder. I turn, and there before me is a thin Indian man, 
with shoulder-length black hair and a week-old beard, wearing a yellow sarong wrapped around his waist, a white t-shirt that hasn't been entirely white in some time, and with a beat-up backpack strapped to his shoulders. He looks like an Indian Jesus, but he says, no, his name is actually Yataris. It is less than an hour until midnight. I heard this is the place to cha-cha-cha. Hey, how you doing? Hi there, I'm Yat. He is ever in motion and does not stop greeting people as they pass by us, guys and girls. Everyone, like he's already sure they are bound to be friends. Hey, nice dress. Hey, man, you ready for tonight? You looking for a place to stay, Yataris? Stay, go, swim, fly. Whatever you have going on, right? I figure you probably don't have any beds, but I just need a place to throw my bag, you know? Who's going to sleep tonight anyway, you know? Let's go to the beach. That's where the action is, you know? Page 166. She looks down at them now and abandons the effort of scratching her arms. The red welts dotting her beloved lower appendages seem to control more territory than not, like blobs of mass ever spreading in a slow inevitable crawl across her skin. She looks up at me anxiously, pleadingly, and asks the two obvious questions in succession. What's biting me? And how am I supposed to go to the beach like this? Page 197. Darwin proves to be every bit the hustler we figured him for, but in a way that's almost charming, if such can be the case. His method is to find someone trying to have a good time, present his partnership as a means to that end, and stays true to his word, guiding a knight to be misremembered at the small commission of the cost of his drinks and associated indulgences. But is that hustling? as the tour guide swindlers of the world do it? I say no, because the next mid-afternoon, when Darwin wakes in the spot where his aging, abused body finally succumbed to fatigue, he searches his pockets and finds nothing. No more cigarettes, no spare cash to resupply. Every morning he wakes that way, flat broke to the world. It is true that his partner in crime will also wake flat broke, a fact that sometimes surprises and distresses them. But they will gradually recall enough hazy highlights of the shenanigans that went down to forgive him for talking them into it, if not thanking him for talking them into it.